Well, if I was the Miami Heat, I'd be a little worried after that performance last night against the Celtics. And if you're a Celtics fan, you've got to be encouraged that Kevin Garnett has seemingly turned back the clock. Another outstanding effort last night. He's played great ball since the All-Star break. Uh, being switched over to the center position reminds me a couple of years ago when the Celtics got Garnett healthy late in the year, then made their playoff push. But I'll tell you what, as I said, Miami did not look good. Absolutely no bench support last night. I think the bench accounted for a whopping, what, 16 17 points in that game against the Seas. Uh, not, not a good performance. Both Miami and even Oklahoma City, uh, recently losers of three in a row, have certainly struggled here since the All-Star break. Hi, everyone. Al DeMarco here, and this is going to be your Wednesday video report coming up in a moment. $15 money-saving discount coupon code that will save you $15 off a single purchase today. And also two more free picks 35 and 21 free pick run after cashing in with the Cardinals last night. Now four and one with baseball free selections with a free play on the Angels twins plus an NBA freebie on the Suns Grizzlies as well. And speaking of baseball guys, uh, as I've said many times here on the video and on the site, Opening three weeks of the season, no matter the sport, the easiest time for you to make money, especially so in baseball, too. Um, now, you don't have the inherent advantage that you have in other sports that you do in baseball, because in other sports, you know as much as the odds makers generally do about the teams and the players coming into the regular season. Of course, in spring training, you've got a 25 to 30 game sampling for the odds makers to be aware of the teams, the pitchers, the players, etc. So it changes the dynamic somewhat here, especially for those of you that don't do this for a living. For me, it's totally different. You know, as I told you, I chart the pitchers during spring training. I put particular weight into their third, fourth, and fifth starts of the spring, uh, and then there's more than that. It comes to whether or not they're playing split squad teams as foes, uh, whether they're playing same league or opposite league teams, uh, also whether or not, um, you know, how many innings they're pitching in those outings as well. There's so many different variables that go into it, but charting spring training pitchers has always made me very successful. It's always generally led to very productive baseball seasons. Baseball is without a doubt my best sport and uh, won last year. I've won 10 of the last 14 years as well. And I've started off this season going 8-1. 4-0 sweep with the paid picks, 4-1 with the free picks. I entered today having won 8 of the past 10 days overall. And tonight, another 15-dime top-rated selection. And again, I'm already a perfect 2-0 with those selections so far this season. Uh, cashing in uh, twice. Uh, first one was last Friday night as I had the Angels on the run line in a 5-0 victory with Gerald Weaver on the hill against uh, Kansas City and Anaheim, and the second one on Monday night when I had a 15-dime uh, play on the Texas Rangers on the run line in Hugh Darvish's debut, and they came back from an early 4 nothing first inning deficit to beat up Seattle by a 11-5 score. 15-dime uh, play may not sound sexy when compared to like the 100-dime play I'm going to tell you about from Craig Davis in a moment, but keep it in mind, keep in context here that 99% of my plays are rated between 5 and 15 dimes, so this is is right there at the top of the scale. Uh, these are the same 15 dime plays I'm 28 and 14 with in the NBA the past three years. The same 15 dime plays that I'm 47 and 32 with in the NFL the past four years. Again, eight of 10 winning days and a 15 dime play going tonight from me in baseball on the nighttime card. Now, speaking of Craig Davis, yesterday turned to Craig for the $5 play of the week. Unfortunately, it lost, and it happens sometimes. You had the Sacramento Kings. They were a nine-and-a-half-point dog early in the day, went off at minus at plus nine, and they lost by ten. Still does not diminish the fact that Craig, since February 1st, has made $10 better, $6,510. The past 49 days alone, he's made that same gambler an even $5,000. And today, first 100 dime release of the baseball season. 100 dime winner number six out of seven, the Arizona Diamondbacks at San Diego against the Padres. He's on a 42 and 28 run overall with 100 dimers in all sports. And again, this is 100 dime winner number six out of seven on the Diamondbacks and the Padres. Anthony Red, who along with Craig Davis, the winningest handicappers at the site here, going back to shortly before the Super Bowl, in fact. Uh, tonight, 80 dime winner number five in a row. It's his NBA dog of 
of the year. You know how this guy loves underdogs. Um, and he has certainly delivered with them this season. 73 and 46 for Anthony Red over the past 84 days. Net profit in that time, well, he's made a $10 better, $9,447. Has he been in somewhat of a slump the last couple of weeks? Well, you know, guys, I'm going to tell you the truth. Yes, he has. Did he lose last night? Yes, he has. But he is certainly upping the ante today, and you can't deny the fact that he's won four straight 89 releases, and he's got number five in a row going today. This is even bigger than a 69 winner on the Thunder over the Raptors on Sunday. Uh, Jeff Benton remains on a red-hot roll, 22 of 32 winning days, including 16 of the last 22. A $10 player has won $5,990 in that 32-day stretch. That's a nice month performance, right? 30-dime road warrior lock going for him today. Had a 30-dime winner on the Bulls over the Knicks last night. 59 and 24 run with 20-dime plays, and this play naturally is stronger. Uh, now, speaking of that uh, Knicks-Bulls games tonight, last night, uh, Dom Chambers, who had cashed in with a seventh straight 50 dime winner on the Phoenix Suns a couple of nights ago. Last night, uh, raised the bar, had a 60 dime play number two in a row in the NBA, but came up on the wrong side as he had the Knicks. I know that sounds strange, and I'm promoting that fact, but as I always tell you, if I can tell you the good, then damn it, I got to tell you the bad. Listen, your money saving discount coupon code in honor of the tax season is going to be TAX15. T A X and the number 15, TAX15. That'll save you $15 off of any single purchase. You don't have to use it to buy my play. Uh, you can use it for anybody's here at the site. Tax 15, T-A-X and the number 15. No space between tax and 15. Now, let's get to your free picks. First of all, in baseball, a game that goes at 8, 10 Eastern time tonight at Target Field in Minnesota, where the Angels have uh, done extremely well, winning seven of their last 10 games. In fact, I'm going to go with the Angels and Gerald Weaver for the second straight time on the run line, as I noted earlier here in the video report, I had them as a run line play as a 15-dime best bet last Friday night, uh, and they responded, and Weaver responded, of course, uh, with a 5 nothing victory over Kansas City in that contest. Weaver went eight dominating innings, uh, scattering four hits, striking out 10, walking no one in a very economical 97-pitch outing. Um, Carl Pavano going for the Twins tonight, 4.76 earn run average lifetime in the month of April for his career. He lost at Baltimore last Friday in a 4-2 decision. Uh, worked seven innings, gave up four runs in there. Listen, the Twins, you look up and down this lineup, there's not a lot of talent here anymore. And not a lot of productive, healthy talent either. Uh, there is a reason that they're off to their worst start since 1981. And in that 0-4 start, they've batted just 165, driving in a total of six runs so far. Um, you know, the Angels are off to uh 2-2 two two start. They have scored 16 runs in those four games, uh, despite the fact that Vernon Wells is 2 for 14, despite the fact that Albert Pujols, you know that guy, is 3 for 14 and is yet to home, or after a phenomenal spring, he has certainly struggled out of the gate. But listen, Weaver is 5-2 and two lifetime against uh, the Twins. Uh, you know, he was 5-0 and oh last April in uh, five starts with a 1.14 earn run average. Two years ago in April, he was 3-0 in five starts with a 2.53 earn run average. Lifetime in April, 14-5 record in 23 career starts, ERA of 2.61. If uh, the Angels could beat the Twins 5-1 in C.J. Wilson's uh, debut two days ago, they can certainly do the same again tonight with Weaver on the hill, and that's why it's worth taking them on the run line where they're like a 110 to 115 chalk because you're willing to lay the one and a half runs. As I told you, you know, baseball has changed betting-wise over the past 15, 20 years. You now have number four starters on a team that's lost three out of four games suddenly laying 180 if they're pitching at home, so you've got to turn to the run line and reduce the odds in your favor by your willingness to give up the run and a half in order to be an effective baseball batter better. Now in the NBA, I'm going to take a shot with the Phoenix Suns, plus the four and a half points at Memphis. Two red hot teams here in the uh, Western Conference. Um, you know, the Suns uh, coming off a 114-90, a 24-point win at Minnesota on Monday night. They've won five of their last six. They've won five of their last seven on the road. Um, they're also 2-0 and against Memphis so far this season. Meanwhile, the Grizzlies, uh, who are pursuing the LA Clippers and the LA Lakers, the third and fourth ranked team in the West 
for the playoff seedings. Uh, just beat the Clippers up at home 94-85 on Monday night. I used Memphis in that particular game. They have won eight of their last ten games overall. They've won six straight at home. But again, I like the way the Suns are playing. You know, I thought they would take a bump when Grant Hill, their best defensive player, went out. But they really haven't missed a beat. You know, the combination of the front line with Channing Fry at 6'11", Jared Dudley at 6'7", and uh, Gortat, their center, at uh, 6'11". Um, you know, I think that matches up favorably with uh, 6'6", Rudy Gay, Maurice Spites, who's like 6'10", and Mark Gasol, who's 7'1", Zach Randolph coming off the bench. He really still hasn't regained his form, now battling a bit of a sore back because of, a, I think, a recent auto accident as well. Uh, the reserves for the uh, Suns have certainly been contributing. You talk about second team performance. You know, all year long, the 76ers have been bolstered by their bench strength. Well, lately, the Suns have been getting similar production, averaging 40.2 points the past 12 games. Michael Redd and Sebastian Telfair have both been outstanding coming in at the guard position to give them instant offense as well. Granted, Memphis's bench has played well as two. Uh, 39.7 points per game uh, the last seven games from the bench. Uh, Grizzlies winning six of those seven games. But again, even though the Memphis has won 11 of the last 13 at Tome, with the only two losses in overtime, I think Phoenix plus the points is the way to go, as I think this is a two- or three-point game, so grab the points with the dog. That'll do it, guys. Good luck, and I'll catch you again on Thursday.